This morning, the Dallas County District Attorney on the defensive over his reforms for not prosecuting some theft cases and trespassers. The governor criticizing John Crusoe, mayoral candidates, even Dallas police officers. We'll ask whether Crusoe might have to rethink his policies. Congressman Mark Vesey in studio on the national effort he is leading to turn Texas blue. A little more than a month left in the legislature, so where do things stand on priority issues? Reducing property taxes and raising our sales tax. Ross Ramsey is in Austin for us. And the Born Alive bill now appears on the way to becoming law. But why didn't House Democrats vote on it? Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley starts now. And good morning from South Victory. We begin with that national effort to turn Texas blue and all the political pressure facing the Dallas DA. But first, let's get you caught up on some political headlines this week. Vice President Mike Pence spent some time in Texas last week. He flew to Dallas and Midland for a couple of fundraisers. Two weeks ago, President Trump was here raising money in Houston and San Antonio. All told, their campaign has picked up $30 million in the first quarter. That is more than the top two Democrats, Bernie Sanders and Kamala Harris. Texas leaders are silent on a threat by President Trump, saying he would send undocumented immigrants to so-called sanctuary cities, places like San Antonio and Dallas, among others. Governor Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Patrick campaigned hard on securing the border, but neither Republican has said anything publicly about the president's proposal to send asylum seekers to some of this state's largest cities. And Tarrant County Sheriff Bill Wayburn spoke in Alvarado a few days ago. He said something too few politicians ever acknowledge. Wayburn encouraged people there to adopt children who are in child protective services, saying 400 kids are looking for homes and hope in Tarrant County alone. Now to that national effort to turn Texas blue or maybe at least purple. The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee now has an office in Austin and it is targeting specific congressional seats. Congressman Mark Vesey, a Democrat from Fort Worth, is leading the effort in eight states, including races right here in Texas. The congressman in studio this morning and joining the questioning, as always, is Bud Kennedy from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Yes. Morning, uh, Mark. Jason, great to see you all. Good to see you, Congressman. Yeah, we haven't absolutely. seen you in a while. Welcome back. Yeah, no, good to be back. Wh which sitting Republican is most vulnerable in Texas? Well, you know, the, the seat that uh, everyone across the nation is talking about, not just in Texas, obviously, is Congressional District 24. Uh, uh, Kenny Marshett is the incumbent in that seat. Uh, it encompasses part of Denton County, Dallas County, and Tarrant County. Uh, and uh, uh, Tarrant County, Northeast Tarrant County specifically, uh, is the part of the district, quite honestly, that is uh, uh, going to be where we need to be able to pick up some votes. We almost want a state legislative seat there. I mean, Jonathan Stickland, who represents that Hearst, Ulysses Bedford area, mm -hmm. uh, he only won by 100 or so votes. And so we, we think that we have a great shot. Uh, I think the uh, challenger there, uh, uh, didn't spend a lot of money at all, uh, but yet uh, you know, the incumbent narrowly won in 2018. And so we see that as a real opportunity as well uh, as other seats around the state. So we're really excited about that. Yeah. And obviously Democrats are super excited about what happened last fall in the 2018 yeah. midterms. I, I'm curious, so how much do you think was really changing demographics, people moving in from California or whatever it might be, or just a dynamic candidate in Beto O'Rourke that really fueled those results? I think it was a combination of a lot of different things. Uh, obviously, uh, there were efforts here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area uh, to fuel a lot of grassroots effort to, to get out the vote. Uh, Beto ran, ran an amazing uh, campaign. Uh, obviously, the president continued to say stupid things over and over again. Uh, he, doesn't, he didn't show himself to be presidential uh, at all his first uh, two years in office, and I think that that helped us out a lot. Uh, and we had a great candidates that, that were running, and I do think that the demographics are changing. I mean, you look at uh, the district that, that I represent, for instance, there's a, a community in Arlington called Viridian, uh, and if you, look, if you look on the congressional map, there's like nothing there. It's just a big green space. And now there are over 2,000 new houses uh, that are there. That's a lot of voters uh, for a really short time period. Uh, and a lot, uh, and some of those people, a lot of those people that I know over there voted, you know, Democratic. And yeah, so absolutely, uh, demographic changes, uh, people coming in from uh, different parts of the country. So, you know, geographically, people moving here yeah. from other places. A little it's, bit of all of it. Yeah, I think it's a combination of everything. Let me ask you about the, the Kenny Marchant race, uh, that challenge. How much will that race cost, do you think? 
Oh, yeah, you're talking about a race that is easily going to uh, cost in, into the millions. I think that uh, he's obviously going to be well funded as a uh, incumbent that sits on the Ways and Means Committee. Yeah. Uh, and whomever the Democratic nominee is has to be uh, committed also to raising uh, the money that's needed uh, to match dollar for dollar to uh, be able to be competitive in that race. Mark, I want to ask you something yeah. people ask me a lot. Who is really the prominent Democratic Party leader in Texas? I mean, obviously, Beto O'Rourke was, was a prominent candidate, but he didn't really run hand in hand with the party. Mm -hmm. You have the Castros are well known in San Antonio, but who who statewide is is the the most prominent Democrat? Who do people look to? Yeah, you know, I think that there are a lot of people that uh, individuals look to within the Democratic Party, uh, particularly when you start talking about on a regional basis. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, in Austin, for instance, uh, you have uh, uh, Congressman Doggett and Kirk Watson. Kirk Watson, as you hear from Fort Worth, now the state senator there a long time. He's really dynamic. A lot of people like him. People have known, known, known Lloyd a long time. Uh, you know, down in the Valley, of course, you have Vicente uh, and you have uh, uh, Philemon Vela uh, that's doing a great job down there. But no real uh, prominent statewide figure. Uh, you know, we're, we're obviously, we haven't had a, 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 a statewide race uh, that had got as much attention as the Beto race did in quite some time. But again, we're uh, definitely, you know, uh, grooming a lot of talent uh, out there to run statewide, and, and we think that that now uh, that uh, we know we can be competitive in these statewide races, and you're going to see a whole new generation, and uh, maybe even some people that you've seen in the past run, and they're going to to probably become the, those stars that you're talking about, but uh, they're going to do a great job because we know the state is now in play. Congressman, you're among those with questions about the recent Texas voter roll purge um, yeah, that David absolutely. Whitley, <clears throat> the Secretary of State, uh, proposed. What do you expect Congress to do in this, if anything? Yeah, well, uh, you know, we would uh, like for the Attorney General's office in the state of Texas to uh, uh, participate and find out exactly, you know, why uh, that happened. Uh, obviously, a, a lot of the. But is that is that reality though? Do you think? I mean, is it realistic? Rather, do you think that would happen? Yeah, I mean, they should. I mean, uh, you know, they were asking uh, questions the other day. I think about a, a Chick Fil A or something, and they wanted to to be able to make inquiries into that. So at the San Antonio airport, right? Exactly. So you, why not something as serious about purging people from the voter rolls? Yeah. And so they absolutely should should want to be transparent, and we need to find out exactly why that happened and why they would believe something that was, you know, based on uh, uh, just a lot of rumors and, and false allegations. Do you think the voter rolls have problems? Uh, I don't, I've never heard of the voter rolls having any problems. And I can actually tell you that when I was in the state legislature, that, uh, you know, there was all this talk about, oh, all these people that are undocumented, that are registered to vote. Uh, and I believe it was Betancourt at the time that was in charge of voting yeah. down in Harris County. And they brought in all these boxes of papers and what have you. And I think there was like one person that was uh, that 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 was un, un, that was that was a legal resident, but they were not eligible to vote. It was a guy that was a Republican that was from Canada, look, and look, so all these people that they were saying were as undocumented voting just turned out to not be true, just as it is was in this case. Final moment here too. I want to ask you about the Mueller report that came out on right. uh, on yeah. Thursday morning. First reaction to that. Uh, first reaction to that is uh, a, a lot of concern. Obviously, I mean, when you have the Attorney General and the uh, Deputy Attorney General disagreeing on, on whether or not uh, there was obstruction of justice. I think that's a, a grave cause for concern. And then the communications, it seems like uh, I haven't had a chance to sit down and go over the report, but just some things that I've been listening to on the news and hearing right. from others about communications between the Trump campaign uh, and people uh, that were Russian operatives is very, very, uh, uh, you know, we need to find out exactly what happened. That's not good for our democracy. Does the report, though, change anything? Um, the full I, report. I think I think the report changes a lot. I think that people are going to be very disturbed. Uh, the more and more this report uh, is combed through, uh, the more and more uh, the harder look that it's given, and the fact that uh, even Mueller was like, "Hey, look, uh, while no while no new charges are going to be brought, that doesn't mean that uh, that the president's been exonerated." All right, Congressman yeah. Mark Vesey, good to see you again. Yeah, great to see you all. Thank you. We are.